This is the stunning Sony UBP-X800M2. From its sleek design, like two pieces of fine marble sandwiching black glass, to its ultra-modern Spartan button design, it exudes luxury. It has built-in Bluetooth, Ethernet, Wi-Fi, 4K resolution, Dolby Atmos, streaming apps such as Netflix and YouTube. You would easily pay $10,000 or more for this stunning piece of art that can literally play almost any type of music, almost any type of video. Then you touch it and realize it's made out of the cheapest plastic known to man. Its buttons are more likely to fall off than stay on, and the remote control weighs almost as much as the entire player. It doesn't have a front display and suddenly you realize why it only costs $300. This is the budget SACD player we'll be pitting against the venerable Yamaha CDS2100. And this is the Yamaha CDS2100, a $3,000 product entirely focused and dedicated to just one job, stereo audio reproduction. Gorgeous in every respect. Machined from aluminum, there is no plastic to be found. Every button feels precise and solidly designed. It has independent power supplies to separate digital from analog. An ESS Sabre 32-bit DA converter. And it can also operate as a DAC with inputs for USB, coaxial, and optical. It's one of the most massive single players ever made, weighing in at 35 pounds. If this was a street brawl, there's no question who you'd put your money on. But it's not. It's a question of ones and zeros being converted into analog sound. So does it sound better than a $300 plastic do-it-all player? Or is it just a piece of audiophile jewelry? Let's find out. So we started our testing, listening specifically to CDs from the great Diane Bish. And while we did throw in one Tchaikovsky, I mean, Diane Bish is the ultimate organist, the ultimate in all music. So there's really no reason to listen to much else. So before we get into our listening results, the SACDs came next, and the Sony sounded the same with the SACDs, but the Yamahas didn't sound like anything at all. It took a little digging to find out that the Yamahas didn't sound like anything because the Yamaha shuts down the coaxial output when playing SACDs. In fact, the Yamaha will only output sound from the balanced outputs or the analog outputs thus rendering my RME ADI2 DAC useless. So the SACD testing was done as follows. The Yamaha was directly connected to an integrated amp, a Yamaha AS2200, via balanced outputs. The Sony was still connected to the RME, and then the balanced outputs from the RME went to the Yamaha AS2200. The headphone jack we used afterwards was now on the Yamaha integrated amp and it is an excellent headphone amp. It is dedicated headphone. It's not linked in any way to the amplifiers that drive the speakers. The only negative with this amp is 50 milliwatts so it's not as powerful as the RME but I never drove the easy to drive AKG 812s anywhere near that level. The negative though is that the RME has a beautiful equalizer output, which I had to defeat um, because it also is used for my speakers. So I had to make sure there was EQ was set to nothing and that nothing had an advantage between the Yamaha and the Sony. I did test the decibel output of both, which we're gonna talk about a little bit in the future because that's kind of important. So here we go. Here are the SACDs we took a look at. So one of the saddest facts of the audio industry we live in today is that there are no 
Diane Bish essay CDs. It it is shocking and it is probably the greatest disservice that ever happened in the audiophile industry, but that's a fact. So I had to start off by listening to the Tchaikovsky Brahms CD, essay CD from the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, and then moved on to Schumann from the London Symphony Orchestra. This is a wonderful essay CD. I then moved on to Hilary Hahn, who could care less what the conductor's doing or what the original composer decided because she just wants to play everything as fast as possible. And eh, wasn't a great SACD, so I don't recommend this one. And then I finished everything off with this SACD of Mozart, the Le Concert des Nations. And I have to tell you that I know you're going to be on me for listening to someone as popular as Mozart, but, you know, you got to just do it once in a while it's what i had on hand so i grabbed it so you can diss me in the comments but it is what it is and i'm not too proud of that when it comes to usability it's not too difficult to really take a knock on the sony it is definitely designed for home theater use and it does not have a display so you really need to connect an external monitor or a tv to it to actually see what's going on if you just want to insert a cd and hit play, it will start playing. And if you know what you're doing, skipping tracks, it works perfectly, which is how I did most of my CD testing and essay CD testing, because I do listen to an album from beginning to end, or maybe from one track, stop, and then start the next track on the other unit. So this wasn't a problem for my testing, but if you wanted to say, start a CD specifically from track number, you know, three or you didn't know the track number and you just really wanted to know the name of the song, um, you're going to have to connect this to an external monitor. The Yamaha has the issue we discussed earlier. If you're going to play an SACD, you can't use the coax or optical out. Not that you'd want to, just to be aware, you probably should be playing with the balanced all the way through. But if you don't have a preamp with balanced inputs, you're going to be stuck using the RCA analogs, which as long as it's not a really long run, you should be okay. But that being said, no coax and that is confusing everything's working great you're playing cds you switch over to an sacd and just nothing so be aware of that i did have one other issue with the yamaha that disc has to be inserted exactly correctly on the tray otherwise it seems to get stuck on the way in you just got to make sure it's within all the grips the sony was much more forgiving with its cheap plastic tray you just put it in and if it wasn't in exactly right. It kind of just wobbled into it before it got into the disc draw. But with the Yamaha, if it was slightly off, it stayed slightly off and it got stuck as it went into the disc draw. So I wish the Yamaha's disc draw was just a little bit more forgiving or it just had a deeper well would have been a little bit better. So we're at that part of the video where I tell you which one sounds best. And we got to go back to the decibel rating I was telling you about before because I felt the Yamaha sounded just a little bit louder. So I did a decibel check and lo and behold, the Yamaha and the Sony were identical. So that wasn't the issue. I felt the Yamaha sounded a little bit deeper in the bass, just a bit. And we're talking about my golden ears, not your ears. So you probably can't tell a difference. Like if you can't tell the difference between this Malbec and this Luscana. You're not going to be able to tell the difference between the Sony and the Yamaha. They're that close, but I have golden ears. I have ears where an audiologist actually told me, and I am telling you verbatim, that their equipment literally cannot check how high of a frequency I can hear. They do not have the equipment at the audiologist to hear as far up in the frequency range as I can hear. So most people are not gonna be anywhere near my level of listening and probably won't be able to hear a difference, but I can because the Yamaha is just a little bit deeper, just a little bit smoother on those highs. So once again, Your mileage may vary. If you go to an audiologist and they tell you they can't measure as high as you can hear, then maybe you should get the Yamaha. Other than that, I'd stick with the Sony or something with a display, so maybe like a cheap Oppo used off of eBay. That's all from Scientific Audiophile, and we hope you enjoyed this video. 
we will be doing a comparison of blind testing rules coming up.